Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian, and in today's video we'll be going over the formula for the cardinality of power sets and why it works. Let's get right into the lesson. Let's start off with a quick example. We'll say that A is the set containing 1, 2, and 3. Just a beautiful, simple little set. And we're going to look at the power set of A. Now remember that the power set of A is the set that contains every subset of A. So let's write that out. The power set of A, it contains every subset of A. Well, the first subset that comes to mind is the empty set. Then we have the set containing 1. Then we have the set containing 2. And I'll write out the rest of these. So here it is. This is the power set of A. Every subset of A is contained in this set. Two of the sets that are easy to forget when we're writing subsets are the empty set and the original set itself. Because remember, every set is a subset of itself. So every set is in its own power set. Since A is a subset of itself, it appears in the power set of A. So how many elements are in this power set? Let's count them up. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements in the power set of A. Notice that eight is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And what is 3? Well, it just so happens that 3 is the cardinality of A. The cardinality of A is 3 because A contains 3 elements. And this is not a coincidence. This is the general rule. So if the cardinality of a set A is equal to n, which means there are n elements in the set A, then the cardinality of the power set of A is equal to 2 to the power of n. Pretty snazzy. But why is this true? Well, that's the interesting question that we're going to get into today. So, why does this formula work? Let's go over it. So let's say we have a set S, and the cardinality of S is equal to n. There are n elements in the set S. Then we can write S like this. It's a set containing n elements. So we're just going to label these elements 1, 2, 3, and so on, all the way up to some nth element. These aren't necessarily the elements that S contains. S is just a generic set, but we know it has n elements, so we have just labeled them with these numbers. Then we ask, what is the cardinality of the power set of S? That's the same as asking how many subsets of S exist. So let's move this up and try to answer that question. How many subsets of S are there? Well, if we're building a subset of S, then that subset can either contain or not contain this element we've labeled 1. So right there is two possibilities. The subset could contain it or it could not contain it. Same thing, that subset could either contain or not contain the element we've labeled 2. So for every two possibilities we had for the first element, we've got another two possibilities for this second element, which means we're dealing with multiplication. And I'm referring to these elements as first and second, but I'm just referring to their label, not their order, because sets are unordered. I just want to make sure that's clear. So then, moving on to the next element, this one labeled 3, our subset could either contain or not contain that element. So again, we've got two possibilities for all four of these possibilities. Every subset could either contain or not contain 1, and every subset that contains or doesn't contain 1 could either contain or not contain 2, and so on to 3, and so on all the way to this element labeled n. So we keep multiplying by 2 all the way up to the element labeled n, because every subset of s could either contain or not contain every single element in s. So we've just got 2 multiplied by itself a bunch of times. How many times? Well, 1 time, 2 times, 3 times, all the way up to n times, of course. So what it's equal to is 2 to the power of n. Because for all n elements of s, we could either include or not include that element in our subset. So there are two possibilities for all n elements. So the total number of subsets is 2 to the power of n. And that's how we get that the cardinality of the power set of s has to be equal to 2 to the power of n, where again, n is the number of elements in s. 
So that's why the formula is what it is. So I hope this video helped you understand the formula for the cardinality of power sets. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. My Just left me to fall